Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Go One of those it. moments. <laughs> well, welcome to the news review segment of the show. This is where we dig into the papers. It's a lean morning, Mama V. Interesting. I mean, uh, another day. I guess another day. we're fortunate to even have some hardcore papers uh, today <laughs> because the, the whole of last week, there weren't papers. We had to go to I the know. online portals. Uh, but of course, there were updates online, except that the news was very scanty wasn't much yeah. happening i guess they're uh, still coming the out issues. out you know off the tracks when it comes to the holidays because yes. you know so it's a bit Absolutely. slow but it will pick up i'm sure from this week yeah all right all right so happy new year if you just tune in it's of course 2021 this is january 4 good for you if you're not working you're still holidaying those of us working there isn't much traffic, so it feels like a holiday, kind of. Maybe things will pick up later. Our court correspondent, Joseph Akable, will be joining us via Zoom on this review. A very important thing happening in the court today, 4th of January. He'll be giving us some updates. Uh, but we've got the Daily Graphic, the Finder, and the Daily Guide, these three papers, and then we'll do the rest online. So let me start off, Ben, if you don't mind, sure. with the Daily Graphic newspaper. This is what's on the front page Presidential inauguration, Ekofuado takes second oath Thursday. Supreme Court prepares to hear Mohammed's petition. A graphic urge to maintain leadership position is also another story. And then I guess the, bis the big one from uh, yesterday's address by the president, basic schools reopen January 15. And then still on the 2020 election petition, Chief Justice's crucial role, paper is highlighting uh, on that, on page 13, let's see. It's a story by Ebo, Emmanuel Ebo Hoxin. It talks about the Chief Justice's crucial role in this petition. And then who becomes next speaker? Race heats up. Uh, we will try and get some names that maybe the paper is mentioning in today's edition. Uh, let's see. Hmm. There's Mr. Freddie Blaise name coming up. He's the national chairman of the NPP. Uh, there's Professor Aaron Michael Quay, the speaker in the seventh parliament. Uh, there's Justice Jones Duche's name also coming up. Yep. He's a Supreme Court judge. And then Ghana's High Commissioner to Canada, Ni Ayikwe Otu. He's also a former Attorney General Minister of Justice. Uh, Ghana's High Commissioner to the UK, Papa Wusuan Koma. His name has also come up. And the paper says that another, another uh, source would not co confirm or deny the names, but insisted the party was yet to take a firm decision on that. From the camp of the NDC, a source confirmed to the Daily Graphic that the party would also propose a candidate for the position of speaker. It mentioned some of the names that had come up strongly as the outgoing second deputy speaker, Alban Bagwin who is also the current member of parliament for Nadoli Kalio, and then a former speaker, Edward Dua Jaho, and a former deputy chief of staff, Dr. Valerie Sawyer. Very interesting names. The others, the source said, were two retired justices of the Supreme Court, Justices William Atuguba and Ophelia uh, Ajabia Adinira, and the General Secretary of the NDC, Johnson Asidu <laughs> in Ketsiya. Wow. Well, lots of names coming up. Yeah. Uh. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting mix there. Yeah, and I'm yeah, just, yeah, yeah. you know, looking forward to what exactly is going to happen, especially with the NDC also putting forward, uh, you know, <laughs> names at, at least for the speakership position. One thing is clear, working together this time is going to be more than we've seen in the Fourth Republic, and so it, it remains to be seen. But of course, there's that issue that still hangs, which could determine which party even might have the opportunity of selecting, you know, uh, the Speaker of Parliament. Mm. And it has to do, and not just the Speaker of Parliament, the leadership of the committees of the House and all of that. And it has to do with the issue we're looking at today, the Hohoi uh, case. Today's mm. the fourth. Today's and, the fourth, and, yes. And that issue is going to be addressed. You remember what uh, Godfrey Dame uh, pleaded for? And so I, I'm just waiting. We, mm. I've told you already, testing the law is, is something <laughs> that excites me. So I'm waiting to see what happens today. All right, let's look at the back page. It's got some spots. It says, Liberty deep in Legon City's woes. Mm. And then, rootless hearts cut bitching to size. I like it when they call hearts rootless. Because yeah. originally, that's, that's, you know, what we are. 
what, what you want. <laughs> <laughs> That's all no pay. But you know, the, the coach, the coach was not happy with the lads' performance. He said while they actually, it was a clean sweep. They did not do what he had wanted them to do on the pitch. So I, uh, I, I wouldn't take that coming from lamenting. you. No, I, but it's what your coach said. I will, I, I'm, not I'm reading the it. headline. I'm reading the headline. That's <laughs> not what it says. It's the secretary of the office. Yeah, but that's not what it says. It says, ruthless heart can't right. pitch him to size. Right. Uh, let's welcome Joseph Akabla. Should I have given you this headline to read, Akabla? <laughs> the, 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 the story on hats. Where is his face? Okay, there he is. We will, hear, we will hear how Hearts actually managed to win that particular match. We will not be surprised if there's news of some possible bribing of wow. officials among other things. Wow, look, baseless allegations. But this is not the even me. Will be unraveled eventually. Shall I show you what the back page says? Do you want to read it? No, I've heard the story already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Akable, listen, let's briefly talk about the names coming up in terms of the speaker. Have you heard any names not mentioned in this paper on the side of the NDC and the NPP? And who do you think will be a perfect speaker for this eight parliament? I think uh, generally those are the names that have come up and uh, they are quite interesting. Uh, it's similar to the 2004 situation where the NDC and NPP both had to put up candidates. Uh, because the MPP decided not to return Peter Lajete uh, due to disagreements with the presidency. The NDC then decided that they were going to nominate Peter Lajete as the Speaker of Parliament, while the MPP came in with uh, Sechina Hughes. So eventually it had to go for a vote. Uh, then but due to that disagreement, the MPP ended up having their preferred candidates as the Speaker, Deputy Speaker, First Deputy and Second Deputy Speaker as well. And so... Whenever you have such disagreement, it becomes tight and one party ends up losing entirely. I think ideally with how parliament is, if not for the close nature, uh, we would have preferred someone that you may want to call non-partisan to handle the affairs. Uh, but due to the close nature of this particular parliament, I get a sense that the executive would obviously want to have someone who could play games and uh, be able to get the other sides on board. You know, those things, it's very difficult for non-politicians to uh, obtain those skills and be able to mm. get people uh, to agree to certain issues in a manner that sometimes goes against the party lines and, and stuff like that. And so that is what makes it uh, quite interesting to look out for. My preference would obviously have been for a non-politician to be a main speaker of parliament and not necessarily from the Supreme Court, but I mean, the MPs will decide. I don't know whether I've answered your question. Oh, I'm so you know, when you say that, there are names coming in terms of uh, high commissioners. So there's Saikwe Otu, for instance, there's Papa Uswankuma. Are those the ones that you're looking at, probably, when you say not necessarily from the Supreme Court, but not necessarily active uh, political animals, if you like? Papa Uswankuma is obviously someone who <laughs> uh, will have respect from both sides of the aisle. And so he, he has been in parliament, he's risen through the ranks, and so he'll be uh, an important uh, appointee if he gets there or not. I'm not too sure whether he will. And so, yes, I would prefer someone of that caliber. I'm not too sure about Aiko too because of his lack of experience in the house. I'm not too sure of how he would be able to work with both sides of the house mm. um, on that level. So that would be tough. I tough. Am, I am all against anyone moving from the Supreme Court to the legislature. I don't think that is a good practice that we ought to encourage. I mean, they should stay on the Supreme Court and do their work and allow uh, every tied MPs preferably to come in to handle this particular job or maybe current MPs. Mm. Interesting. Well, uh, I can't believe. So something else I would like to run by you. Today is D-Day and you've been talking about the, you know, the, the Hohoi uh, situation. What, what are the latest, uh, what have you been hearing that you can share with us on that matter? And so uh, you recall the court on January 30, uh, December 30 uh, had said that uh, the lawyers on both sides filed their written agreements. And lawyer Chashikata was asked to file by 31st December at 12 noon with the AG's office exercising the rights to respond by a close of working day. Uh, what has actually happened since then is that uh, Mr. Chikata failed to file by 12 noon. He actually filed his arguments on uh, December 31 at 2.30 p.m. And so it was just 30 minutes to the close of work at the filing office. So the attorney general's office could not be served in time and they couldn't 
even responding. So we understand that this morning the AG's office will first draw the court's attention to the fact that Mr. Chikata has failed to file in time as was ordered by the courts. And so because of that, the AG's office couldn't file any arguments. We understand that the AG's office will nonetheless say that the court should proceed to hear the matter based on the merits and have the legal arguments take place. And the AG will be urging the courts to restrain the high court from proceeding to hear any matter relating to the whole constituency. And the latest is that in that regard is also that the 10-day injunction has actually elapsed. And so there's currently no injunction in force in terms of the Gazette of John Pitame, who has MP elects for Hawaii constituency. And so it will be quite an interesting uh, day at the Supreme Court. And uh, the expectation also is that the Apex Court will be able to uh, deliver judgment if it is minded to do so today uh, in order to uh, clear the way, if you can put it that way, or give further directions that may stall the process. And so this is very important as it affects the composition of Parliament in some 48 hours to come. So before we check out the other papers, very important point you make there. The injunction has technically elapsed. And so if today there is no uh, further process, uh, that legally speaking, it means things are going to be hanging, especially as we gear up for, you know, uh, the seventh, where indeed the eighth parliament will be sworn in. So very interesting times indeed that we have on our, our hands uh, there. Mamavi, maybe you'd like to... Oh, oh, just to add that yesterday there were pictures of Mr. Mewu registering, uh, you know, there's a registration exercise going on with uh, members of parliament who will be coming in in the eighth parliament. There were pictures of uh, of him, you know, filling his yeah, documents. He's, he, he's confident. And people were asking about the injunction and whether or not... It's at a lab. It's at on Saturday. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's do Daily Guide. I think I'll, I'll commence with the Finder newspaper. Okay. And it says, Dr. Awal, uh, the Business uh, Development Minister, gifts Tamale Nursing and Midwifery Training College a uh, 50 kilovolt standby generator. That's on page 12. Then there's police outline tight security measures for inauguration. That's on page 5 of the paper. Schools reopen in full from January the 15th uh, that's on page two and i'll just take snippets of that i think the way the finder newspaper usually captures these is very apt it's point by point and so beginning from the 15th of january children in you know the basic schools i'm talking about kindergarten primary and junior high in both private and public schools will be back in school shs two and three reopen on january 18 shs one that will be on march the 10th but note if you missed it yesterday no more double track for shs one and three that's the new situation but double track will continue for shs uh two and uh well in, in yesterday's address the president went on to talk about some lessons drawn from the reopening of schools and the hygiene protocols and all of that i was mentioning earlier that kenya uh you know the students also go back to school today and we can see what we can learn from them ahead of our own reopening. Our cases are still out there, so let's not take them for granted. Now, there's uh, the bit about 20 NDC MPs facing charges over the march to the EC's headquarters. That's on page uh, four. I'll dig a bit into that as well. And the story actually says 20 National Democratic Congress members of parliament have been charged with unlawful assembly following their march to the Electoral Commission's head office in Accra on Tuesday, December 22, 2020. Now, in addition to the MPs, the NDC's Deputy General Secretary, Peter Buamo Otokuno, was also charged with the same offence. They are said to have, note, failed to notify the police before their march. The statement of offence said they unlawfully assembled and conducted themselves, quote, in a manner likely to cause persons in the neighbourhood reasonable fear where a breach of the peace is likely to be occasioned, unquote. And uh, those charged, Haruna Idrisu, Mohammed Mubarak, Muntaka, Samuel, uh, Sam George, John Abdullah, Jina Paul, Roxen Dafia, Mepo, Ras Mubarak, Mutawakilu, Adam, Ebenezer, Klete, Tel Abi, uh, Dr. Kwabana Donko, and ABA uh, Fusaina. There are others, but those are some of the names uh, right there. Let me no just, ill motive in, yeah. sorry about that, no ill motive in transfer of judges. That's according to the judicial service. That's mm -hmm. a story as well on page four. Interesting one you should get into because there are always, it's just like the, with the police reassignment, reshuffling and all of that. There's always a bit about, oh, 
there's something in there. Why am I getting, why is this person getting reshuffled and all of that? So uh, all of that in there on page four. You had wanted to uh, jo Joseph, just before you leave us, the last bit on this, uh, on the back of the NDC minority members who have been charged. Do you know the manner in which this will be carried out? And so um, they are to show up at the circuit court. Uh, we understand that some of them have indicated that they will not be showing up. Uh, they, they, are, they are drawing on what they believe to be some form of immunity because they say they have parliament today at 10 a.m. And so if they are required to show up in the court at 9 or at 10 a.m., they cannot show up. And so and that is the latest that we've picked up on that particular issue. Um, but they were served. They've been served. We understand with the court summons prior to this particular weekend. So uh, we are waiting to see. And again, some of them are also saying that uh, they've not... The police prosecutors and the state prosecutors, for that matter, have not written to the speaker, uh, informing the speaker of this particular move. You know, in times past, we've seen it. The speaker is written to and informed that this is what is happening. And so the MP should be excused or allowed to show up. They are in the, it came up during the Ayaraga issue, the High Court. The speaker actually wrote to the High Court, asking the High Court judge to fix hearings such that it doesn't affect the work of the MP. But the High Court judge then rejected that particular letter and said that, I mean, the court is independent and the legislature cannot determine for it how it runs in business and no such immunity exists for an accused person. And so today will certainly be an interesting day in that the MPs may not show up. And if they are not, then the only other option, un unless there's a good reason why they are not showing up, will be for the courts to, the state first to ask the courts for an arrest warrant to be issued against them. And so we don't know how all of those issues will pan out, unless maybe the prosecutors have also been informed of their inability to show up due to parliamentary business. But the charges against them, one relates to unlawful assembly and the other being a breach of the public order act. Mm. Okay, very interesting. So one eye is at the circuit court and the other at the Supreme Court, all happening this morning. Uh, Joseph Akable, we'll let you go for now. Thank you very much. That's our court correspondent. You've got one last paper to do. Yes, one last paper. But, you know, interestingly, we found out at a point that even in Parliament, there could be the situation of contempt. And I'm wondering whether this action, at least from the court's end, because these are parliamentarians involved, whether uh, it could in any way, you know, border on those lines where you are summoned to appear before a court and, you know, you fail to show up because um, in this instance, well, there are those technicalities of the Speaker of Parliament citing that we're supposed to have, you know, something in the House of Parliament. And so these people mm. are not going to be able to make it. But like you heard Akable say, some of them are simply saying we're not going to show up. Mm. Well, we wait to see how things unfold this morning. Well, uh, so the Daily Guide, Mahama in court seeks election rerun. And then uh, Supreme Court hears a mirror injunction case today. These are all cases we've heard. Interestingly, in the Daily Graphic, it gives a blow-by-blow -blow account of, you know, the difference in the case, the petitions, 2012 and now. Okay. 2012, where you would have, you know, cases of over-voting, uh, polling stations that didn't exist per what the claims were, and where you would have the petitioners being the, the current president, the vice, and... Um, the chairman of the party at the time, Jake Obechebi Lamte. In this instance, it is, you know, the flag bearer of the NDC uh, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the winner uh, or the president-elect, uh, Nana Dodankwe Kufuado, and the EC. So it is some very interesting dynamics, the changes, the different scenarios. And mind you, in 2012, the MPP was calling for the entire presidential election to be overturned. In other words... Now president to then be declared president. That didn't happen. But in this instance, uh, you know, John Dramani Mahama is simply saying that none of the parties got the 50% and over. And so, you know, uh, th there must be a rerun. So very, very interesting dynamics. You should check out the details from the Daily Graphic with regard to the differences, 2012 and now. Okay. All right. Let's quickly do myjawline.com. Uh, myjawline.com. We'll probably see what's happening on the BBC real quick before we introduce our sports segment. So this is what's happening on our page this morning. Schools to reopen on January 15, says the president in that state, uh, in that address yesterday. There's a playback if you missed it. Government reintroduces free water and electricity for Lifeline customers. That's for the next three months, January, February, March. 
schools to, reopen, uh, to resume. Okay, this was before the address. Uh, we will not honor police summons to appear in court on Monday. Uh, that's according to the minority leader. We've heard Joseph Akable give us the backstory. Uh, Bono East Regional Coordinating Council inaugurated to commence socio-economic development. FBI searches for victims of $28 million Ponzi scheme. Plenty other stories on myjoyonline.com. Uh, Ghana will plant, harvest, and build to be fruitful, says Dr. Mensah Otbil of the ICGC. Plenty of stories there. Uh, that you can find time and then read. Maybe we can do the BBC briefly. There's also Trump tells Georgia official to find votes, and there's been that telephone conversation about an hour long where he was supposedly telling the person, look, find me some 11,000 plus votes. <laughs> and, you know, I don't know, but Trump never ceases to surprise. There's also, after another Chelsea loss, how much pressure is Lampard under? That's a very... Uh, interesting one. At a point in time, we were calling for our coach to get the axe. Uh, now, when I say our coach, it excludes Mama V because she's now a Leeds United uh, fan. You know, just and uh, just you're Leeds I, United. No, just, hey, just guys. when I just when I, I took my eyes off the ball, uh -huh. I realized Manchester United was second on the. I was like, what? We are level How did of points with Liverpool, <laughs> and now you're thinking, uh, no, oh, no, confess, no, no, confess, no, confess. No, no, are you no. going to? Are you going I to? I am not. Again? I'm not thinking anything. Okay, and finally, <laughs> on patrol, night vision in DR uh, Congo. So those are some of the stories from the BBC as well. Okay. Let's, uh, you know, see the position now and do some sports. That's up next on the AM show. Yeah, but just before that, I think this is very interesting. Right. South Africa targeting to vaccinate 40 million people by end of 2021. 40 million? 40 wow. million people by end of 2021. That story is right there on the Africa page of the BBC. Okay, so this is where we have to leave. We have to end the review. After spots, we'll come back and deal with some very important matters with the reopening of schools. We've got some stakeholders on the show to have a conversation with. We will also be talking uh, extensively about the NDC, the minority members of parliament who are expected to appear before court today. You've heard some of them say that they will not honor that. We will be discussing that issue. But we've got a special package in sports today. 54 years ago in Kenston, Jamaica, the special 4 by 100 meters quartet comprising Bonake Men's, Ebenezer Charles Okoadi, James Ai Adi, and Stanley Fabian Alute won gold for Ghana in grand style at the 1966 Commonwealth Games. The young and energetic Ghanaian athlete set a games record and denied host Jamaica of gold. Ghana's 1966 success story on the tracks cannot be overemphasized because of the giants the Golden Quartet were up against. The gallant men who run the first and third legs, Mens and Ayadi, have sadly passed on, but Aluti and Okoadi are still very much alive, residing in the United States and Ghana, respectively. To finally get to tell the wonderful story, George Adigenia of Joy Sports caught up with Okoadi, nicknamed Daddy Long Legs, at his home in Accra at almost 80 and alone these days after the passing of his wife, Professor Irama Adi.